the racist cast in a play called Hamilton. They said whites need not apply when they were playing. Okay, Robert, we just finished up. If you want to go on and roll the intro. Can you give us programming um, on those, please? Thank you. <laughs> Scott Hudson, we are at Carterville High School. Scott, for kicking off the 2016 high school basketball season in the Pyramid Plus Tournament. Seems like we are just kicking off the uh, 2016 high school football season. <laughs> 
but here ten weeks ago. Yeah, but here we are in November, <laughs> November twenty first to be exact, and it is the first night of the Pyramid Plus tournament here at Carterville. Two games in the books already. Collinsville beat Mount Vernon 41-27 in game one. Marion just beat Meridian six and a play Marion to open the tournament uh, for both schools and then on Saturday night the other cross county rivalry as uh, Shane Hawkins David Brown uh, the Marion Wildcats that'll be the, the the finale game Saturday evening at this time uh, this Saturday night but uh, how awesome is it that um, Carterville is able to host a tournament in this facility well this is a great facility and I think Carterville you know going to 3a this year you know, this was a perfect opportunity for them to get to get in this tournament to play the schools like Collinsville, Mount Vernon, you know, Heron and Marion, which they may have to play at some point in the postseason. And even Meridian, the 1A school here, I'm sure their coach said, look, we're only going to get better by playing better teams, and that's exactly what they're going to do this week. But Carnival has to look at it as, look, we're 3A this year. Let's go out and play the big schools, and let's see what happens that first week. Well, and then later in the month of December, you throw in, the opportunity that the Lions have to play the Carbondale Terriers. I like how this tournament sets up, or how the tournament and that game with Carbondale in about uh, three weeks kind of helps this team prepare for the heady conference schedule. Yeah, I think you're going to, Coach Hawkins is going to find out a lot about his team between now and conference time. You know, he's got to find out who he can depend on. He's got to find out who, probably the biggest question mark with Carnival this year, Dave, is probably their bench. Who's going to be able to come off the bench and help give me points, help play good defense? So this this is all of the, all of the process leading up to the tough conference on the Mississippi side of the River to River. It absolutely is, and it all gets underway here this evening at Carterville High School. If you're in the Carterville area, still time, plenty of time for you to get over here as we're about 15 minutes away uh, from uh, the tip-off here in the first basketball game for 2016. This Lions broadcast, it is brought to you by the bank. For more information, stop by the Carterville Banking Center or visit their website at tboc.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender and here come the Carterville Lions onto the floor for the first time for 2016 this is a team Scott that only has three seniors yeah and they're very important seniors uh, you look at Taylor Howell the big guy in the middle you know he's going to be the guy that's going to be called upon to dominate on the boards dominate defensively in the paint and score a lot first year coach Shane Hawkins and you got on the other the two wing men uh, are uh, Justin Johnson and Blake Jackson they will fire they they're they're all quick to fire if when they get the shot when it's there and uh, they're all perfectly every one of those players is is perfectly capable of hanging 20 in any game and, th and that's the key to Carterville's season I think is you've got the guys that can shoot the ball from the outside you've got guys can hit up an outside shot or do we double team out high and try to play one-on-one -on -one with the big guys in the middle the other question is uh, with the graduation uh, class last year of uh, Austin Swalls graduating that is a 21 points per game average that Austin had who's going to pick up that slack for the Lions well it's kind of like I love Coach Haw Hawkins is going to look for. I don't think he's looking for just one guy. He's got to have starters and somebody come off the bench to help make up those points. And uh, when you talk about uh, who's coming off the bench when you uh, for the uh, Carterville Lions, you're probably looking for uh, junior forward for the Lions. The Carterville will probably go seven deep. They might go eight deep. But the key to that is staying out of foul trouble for that starting five. Well, they also have good size in their backcourt. And that can cause matchup problems for opposing coaches. So it's going to be the Carnival Lions and the Heron Tigers to kick things off here in the Pyramid Plus. We want to say thanks to Brett Dial and the Carterville staff for taking care of us and getting us set up. There's a nice crowd here for this first game of the evening, and we're going to take our first break for the basketball season. When we come back, I just moments ago, I had a chance to talk to new Carterville head coach Shane Hall. Robert, just go right into the interview. Right into the interview. 90 seconds interview. If you're looking for local personal service, visit them today at any of their 15 locations.
Hello, Carterville sports fans from Caldwell Banker Preferred Real Estate. We're just like the Lions. We work hard for you. We're real estate companies that use gimmicks and giveaways just to get your business. There are companies that we are preferred. Want to find out why? Call 95-4242. State McKenzie with Carterville head coach Shane Hawkins. First of all, coach, first to begin kickoff in November anyway. Uh, but this one, you know, with, with being a new job and new kids and new surrounding, it's uh, we're anxious to get going. And it, it seems like the, uh, there's a long time until we got back to start. And the last two weeks have really flown by. And uh, kind of like every other coach, and when it's that first game, uh, you know, I, I really like where we're at. I think we've had a, a good couple of weeks uh, of practice. So, uh, and I think they're ready to play too. I think they're just they're tired of battling each other every day of practice. How do you act like no personnel a little bit? Um, Coach Mooneyham is back in charge, so there's, you know, the coaching change there, so you're not sure exactly what they're going to do. Uh, you know, you can kind of throughout the game and, uh, and not overload our guys during the game. When you look at the Carterville starting in five, you have four that have significant varsity time from last year. Um, but after after those first four, there's not a lot of varsity experience on on this Lions team. No, there's not, and, and, and that's fine. Uh, you know, obviously, we're a group of guys who have uh, who have been in a section, at least dressed for one, and, uh, and played a little bit in, in the postseason. So I think there's four. Uh, in you know, even going back to the summer, uh, but even in the first two weeks of practice, they've been they've been outstanding leaders for us. And, uh, you know, we talked about when, when we got here, if we didn't have to coach effort and attitude, we'd be a step ahead. And, uh, I think those, those three seniors have, uh, have kind of taken that run with it. Uh, they've been great leaders for us so far. I think one of the things that we've seen in the early games tonight is conditioning. I know you work a lot on conditioning. Sprints in here uh, to go into the first couple of weeks of practice. We have guys in football. Uh, and they said, we're in a pretty good shape. We're a totally different sport. Uh, and I, I told them, we've worded it this. If you're waiting for a huddle here, you want to run a four or five second play, and then you're ready for a 25 second huddle. And I said, we don't have that. It's just a different conditioning. And, uh, but uh, the way we kind of lay out our practice is just, I, we don't want to have to run a bunch in a practice. We want to get our conditioning done in practice, in drill work, uh, so that we're going hard enough in our drills. We're being able to to pass and dribble, catch and shoot uh, at game speed. Taylor Hyle and Luke Ford will be inside for us. Uh, Scott, that's a that's a coach. This reason, as a coach, you're more continuing play. They know what I'm talking about. For those that have a good defense, and they will not be day number one. Well, we locker room, but they're coming back out on the floor. We'll have JPF. Appreciate it. On the courts, take another break. And when we come back. Just keep it till I tell you otherwise. We'll take it after this, this one.
Back at Carterville High School, it's Dave McKenzie and my partner Scott Hudson. It's a basketball game tonight. Yeah, it is. Again, it's hard to believe that uh, we're already at November 21st. It's hard to believe that Thursday is Thanksgiving <laughs> and Christmas is just around the corner. I hope you've bought my present, by the way. I'm working uh, on it. Okay. But, yeah, this, I think this is a good test for both teams tonight. Heron coming off a 10-11 win season last year, very disappointing. I think this is, a, I think this is again, as I said earlier, I think this is a good way to end the first night of the Pyramid Plus tournament. The uh, Heron Tigers starting lineup are being introduced right now. Uh, DJ Spell, the 6'4 junior, uh, wearing number 12 is the first starter. Uh, Jake Down in number 24, the 6'4 senior. And then uh, it's uh, Jacob Hartline, the uh, 6'1 senior uh, guard. He'll be as the third starter. And then you have uh, Drew Ringel, the 6'2 sophomore, the fourth starter and the fifth starter is uh, Bronson Nessler wearing number 10, the 6'1 junior. Both teams announce the starting lineup for the Carneville Lions. This Lions broadcast, it is brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating in downtown Carterville. Over 30 years, certified York dealer and uh, services all brands called 985-2502. It's Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating.com. I think in the first game like this, Dave, when you've got two uh, teams separated by about five, six miles, there's going to be some nerves. You know, there's going to be some butterflies in the stomach. So I think each team just have, has to survive the first three or four minutes of the game, let the game come to them. And then I think you'll see, you know, you'll see the, the for him. So I'm sure he's got a few butterflies in his belly as well. And he also has uh, coach, of course, uh, Dennis Drust as his uh, assistant coach. But you have David Russell, Lane Alexander, and Quinn Laird. They're all assistant coaches as well. He's got a good staff around him that can kind of help him navigate this first game here this evening. Well, you can take any head coach in any sport, any level, and they'll tell you that they're only going to be as good as their players and their assistant coaches. You have to have that support cast. If you don't, you're probably going to struggle more times than not. Don't forget this Carterville Lions team. This is a team that uh, won the regional a year ago, won 21 with the three seniors, Brandon Beasley, Taylor Heil, and um, um, Blake Jackson, the uh, third senior. Um, I, I, I really like the makeup of this squad um, and, and see how things go. J uh, Justin Johnson, if you remember, uh, a key part of this Carterville Lions basketball team, but tonight he's got a brace on his uh, left knee, and um, it's just nice to be able to see him out there on the floor. Carnival's got a good mixture of size and speed and guys that can shoot the ball all over the floor. Here we go. The teams are on the floor. The officials are ready at midcourt. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2016 Lions basketball season is underway. Luke Ford. Uh, it's Taylor Howe down the lane. Puts out the left-hand runner. No good. And the rebound there by DJ Spell. Heron with the basketball across midcourt. That is Drew Ringel. Works it to the left side to Nestler. Back to um, uh, Downen now. At the top of the key. They work it down in the paint. DJ Spell gets his first bucket of 2016. Yeah, they've got to keep, Carlos got to keep Spell out at least 10 feet away from the basket because if he gets inside that 10-foot range, that's where he does his damage. Lines in the front court to give it to Luke Ford at the uh, right elbow. Turnaround jumper from eight, no good. Bounces around, and the ball is out of bounds off of the Heron Tigers. Carnival's gotten a couple of good looks on their first two possessions. They just haven't been able to get the ball to go in. It's going to be Carterville basketball. Um, um, as uh, the ball went out of bounds, Brendan Beasley, the senior guard, he is going to trigger the inbounds from the baseline. Over to Justin Johnson, left wing, on top of the key. Now to Beasley, slides it over to Blake Jackson. Jackson, the right-hand dribble, back to the top, back to Beasley. Now back to the left wing to Blake Jackson. Uh, Heron in a 2-3 zone defense right now. Ford at the right elbow, one um, jump, but one step, and a shot no good. Doesn't hit anything, and the rebound comes off to the Heron Tigers. Drew Rangel with the right hand dribble between the circles. Over to the right is 4-0 uh, Heron. Well, good fake by down on the baseline. A little head fake. Got the baseline. Now he's going to try to complete the conventional three-point play. So Downen is at the line. It's 4-0 with 6.24 left here in the opening quarter. Downen, the 6-4 senior 
good football player as well. His free throw is no good. And the rebound comes off to Grant Garby for the Lions who just checked in. Beasley now over to the left wing. They work it to uh, Justin Johnson. Drops it to Taylor Heil. Heil from the right baseline. They work it back around to the near side. Blake Jackson here on uh, the uh, right wing. Now it's this. Oh, there's a big scramble. That ball was tipped around about three times. But they're going to call a foul on Carterville's Justin Johnson. Yeah, Carterville trying to get the ball on the inside. They weren't able to do that. Then you had a mad scramble on the uh, left wing, and a foul's called on Carterville, and that'll give the ball back to Heron, who has a 4-0 lead. 4-0 with 5.52 left here in the opening quarter. That foul once again on Justin Johnson. That is the first foul on J.J., the first team, team foul for the Lions. Down and works the pass into D.J. Spell at the right elbow. He kicks it out right baseline. They're going to work it back around the top as it comes to Nestler. Now he gives it up to Downen. Back to Nestler, left wing. He's guarded by Johnson. Now between the circles, it's Drew Rangel. Now right baseline over to uh, Hartline. Hartline guarded there. They bring it near side as Nestler uh, gives up the ball. That's a turnover. And, oh, I think they're going to say that uh, Justin Johnson stepped out of bounds, actually. And it's going to belong. Unfortunate because Carterville playing good man-to-man -man defense. Pass comes out into the front court to uh, Nestler. Nestler gives it up. And uh, it's uh, DJ Spell now at the top of the circle. Down low. Down and kicks it back out. Nice job saving that ball from going out of bounds. DJ Spell drives the lane. Right-hand layup is good. He's got four here in the first uh, quarter. Yeah, nobody on Carterville stepped in front of him to take a charge. Let him go right down the lane. So it's Blake Jackson on uh, the glass. So Heron with the uh, basketball as uh, Drew Ringle brings it across the uh, timeline and uh, they're going to say that's a foul on uh, Drew Ringle. That's a turnover on the Heron Tigers. Carterville basketball. Well, good, good pressure at the center line by the Lions to create that uh, foul. Carterville looking to cut into this 6-2 deficit. Grant Garby, the 6'3 uh, uh, junior. He's in the game for the Lions. It's down to the right left baseline, Taylor Heil. And they kick it back out. Blake Jackson fires from three off the back of the iron. No good. Rebound, Heron Tigers, as the ball comes off to Jacob Hartline. Heron over on the right side. That is uh, Drew Ringel. And the ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be off Carterville, and it's going to belong to the Heron Tigers. Yeah, Lions only one of five from the field. 6-2, the score, Heron on top, 4-10 left here in the first quarter. It's Heron basketball. They are in the road orange uh, uniforms on the far side from us. We're in the corner here, and uh, they, they play to the far side. The three ball by uh, Rangel is good, and that's his first points of the game. It was a three. Yeah, Heron is five, or excuse me, four out of four from the field. That's pretty darn good shooting, Tex. As Garvey has it left wing, he steps into the circle. Slime Justin Johnson for three. Good for Justin Johnson. His first bucket of 2016. Well, Lions needed that basket to get back within four. Heron on a little bit of a run. Nine to five, Heron Tigers on top of the Lions. 3.15 left here in the opening quarter. DJ Spell from the right elbow puts up a shot. No good. And it is Blake Jackson that pulls down the rebound. He brings it into the front court. Carterville's going to set right here. As they work it to Jackson, right, right wing, back to Beasley, between the circles, back and forth they go. As Justin Johnson cuts through the lane, they're going to keep it out top, though. Beasley with the left-hand dribble, takes it around to the far side now, works from the left wing. He's guarded by Hartline. It's man-to-man -man now for the uh, Heron Tigers. Kind of a modified man, a little bit of a zone in there, but... Uh, man on the point, but it's Beasley that gets the ball between the circles. Now it's over to Grant Garmy for the Heron Tigers. 2.35 on the clock. Three, that is good for Brennan Beasley. Instant offense. Lions only down by one now. That's five points now for uh, Beasley in uh, the first uh, quarter. 2.13 and we've got a foul on the Carterville Lions. I think they're going to call it on Grant Garby. Yeah, Jake down and tried to go baseline and Garby didn't get there in time. It is Grant Garby. That's his first foul of the game. And so it's going to belong to the Heron Tigers as it's um, Heron on the far side. They're going to trigger from under their own basket. 
bring it back out top. That is uh, Bronson Nestle, the 6'1 junior for the Heron Tigers. Yeah, into the game now. Um, that is Nestler that fires from three for Heron from the left wing. It is 12-8. Heron on top, under two minutes to go. Well, you can't leave Nestler wide open on the wing like that. He'll bury it every time. Carter Bill with the basketball. It's Garby. He drives down the lane, and uh, he gets fouled. That's going to be on DJ Spell. That is going to be the first foul on DJ Spell, and actually the second team foul on the Heron Tigers. Yeah, Garby got a step on Spell, and Spell had, had really no, nothing else he could do but foul Garby, keep him from scoring. So it's 12-8, to 8, a four-point lead for the Heron Tigers, about a minute 46 remaining here in the first quarter. Carterville has the basketball. Beasley triggers the inbounds and uh, works it over to uh, Tyler Biddle uh, that is in the game for the uh, Lions. Excuse me, Dylan Moore is who that is. Dylan is a uh, 5'11 sophomore for the Lions. I told you they were young coming off the bench, and uh, you can see that right now. Is on the floor. You have Grant Garby. Dylan Moore, uh, Beasley, Taylor Heil, and uh, Blake Jackson as it's back and forth between Beasley and Blake Jackson. 1.15 on the clock here in the first quarter. Beasley drives the lane and he gets fouled as he uh, stepped inside the lane. I think they're going to call that on uh, 32. That's Excuse me, on, uh, Drew, Drew Ringle. Yeah. And that is the uh, second foul now on Ringel. Carterville basketball. Dylan Moore works it over to Beasley between the circles. There's Taylor Heil, top of the key. He gets it, kicks it out, gets it back again. He's being worked by uh, tie down and now into the game for the Tigers. Moore, top of the key. Brendan Beasley now uh, between the circles going to reset the offense. Under a minute to go, 45 seconds left. As a matter of fact, it's a four-point lead for the Heron Tigers. Beasley over on the left wing. Thought about the step back jumper, pulls it back out. Moore's going to work it back between the circles to Blake Jackson. Jackson is guarded by DJ Spell. They're going to work again, and we're working our way toward 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Jackson dribbles around, left wing, gets it into Garby. Garby kicks it out to Moore. Now to Blake Jackson, fakes the shot, drives the lane, dump pass down to Grant Garby. That's nice give and go by the Carterville Lions, and a nice way to end, or toward the end here, of the first quarter. Heron into the front court quickly. Ten seconds left as it's uh, top of the circle to Bronson Nessler. And we've got a travel, a turnover called on the Tigers. Well, one thing about Nessler, if you can make him put the ball on the floor, you might be able to get a turnover. Bronson's very good at getting the ball and shooting, but he's not real good at the dribble drive. So Carnival's going to have the chance to knock down another bucket here before the end of the first quarter. They're down two. It's 12-10. And I like how this game started out for the Lions. They've, they've caught fire here late in the first quarter. Two seconds left. Beasley for three. is no good. Doesn't hit anything. He was trying to get the foul, and he hits the floor, and there is no foul called. So we played one quarter. Let's go 60 here. 60, please. Back at Carterville High School, it's Dave McKenzie with Scott Hudson where we have played one quarter and uh, the Heron Tigers lead the Carterville Lions 12 to 10. That was a nice first quarter for both teams actually. Yeah, Heron got off to the big start, had a nine to two lead. Carterville caught fire late to cut the lead to two. Heron shot 83% from the field in that first quarter. Had They had two threes. Carterville 44%, they had two threes as well. When you look at scoring, uh, Heron is led by DJ Spell. He's got four, Drew Ringle has three, and uh, Bronson Nessler has three. 
As uh, Heron has the ball in the far court, it's a three ball from the top of the key. That is uh, Drew Ringel, and he buries it for the Lions, for the Tigers. Well, that's their third three of the game. Carterville works it in to uh, Taylor Heil in the near side. Carterville in the home white jerseys this evening. Uh, Beasley give and go to Taylor Heil, and he traveled. he traveled before he got the shot. He made the shot, but he traveled before that. I think when he got the ball, when he turned, I think he was expecting a Tiger to be there. Yeah. There was nobody there. Yeah, it was wide and open. He, and he kind of took a stutter step, and uh, only in the NBA can you get away with that. That's true. <laughs> you can double that yes. in the NBA. Heron with the basketball in the front court, far side, heart line, kicks it over to uh, Ringel, and then uh, to uh, uh, Nessler. Now it comes out top of the key. That is Jake Downen. He drums it down low. Nice shot put up. No good, though, by uh, Heron's. Uh, Drew Rangel blocked and blocked, and then Taylor Howe gets the ball back again. So Carterville into the front court quickly. It's Brendan Beasley to Moore. That is Dylan Moore, number 20 for the Carterville Lions. He works it around, top of the circle, back to Blake Jackson, and Carterville's going to reset as uh, they give it over to Grant Garby, wearing number 32 for the Lions. It's uh, Brendan Beasley. Shake and bake, top of the key, right hand dribble, loses uh, handle on it, goes out of bounds, and uh, they're going to say it was off of Beasley. That's a turnover on the Carterville Lions. Yeah, their third turnover of the game, and Beasley just tried to do a little bit too much going one on one on the outside. So Heron will inbounds uh, right below us here. DJ Spell gives it to uh, Jacob Hartline, and he uh, takes a slow uh, trot across the timeline. Now they're into the front court. They work it quickly. That is Nestler uh, to uh, down and back to Nestler. Down low to DJ Spell. Right hand uh, layup is good by Spell. Now Drew, uh, DJ Spell has six points for Heron. Carterville into the front court. It's uh, Blake Jackson with a right-hand dribble. He is guarded by Halloway, uh, uh, Hayden Halloway for the Tigers, who just checked in to the game as they get it to Grant Garby at the free throw line, turns around, gives it back to Dylan Moore. Now it's uh, Taylor Howell, fires from three off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound by Jake Hartline. He's into the front court with the left-hand dribble off of uh, Nessler. He gathers it back in, and he's going to work it down low, wide open. That is Halloway, and his shot is good for the Heron Tigers. Yeah, somehow he lost his defender, and all of a sudden it's a nine-point Heron lead. 19-10, 5-35 remaining in the first half. Carterville with the basketball. Beasley around the left side, puts up the shot off the iron, no good. And uh, the rebound comes off to DJ Spell. He gathers it up, and Heron is going to head back the other way. Jake Hartline across the timeline to Holloway. Now down low, that is down and kicks it out to uh, Nessler. He fires from three, no good. And uh, Heron controls. Nessler fires again and buries that one from the left wing. And uh, Carterville Lions head coach Shane Hawkins calls a timeout. We're going to take a timeout as well. It is a, well, actually, we'll keep it here. It's a 30 second timeout, Scott. But uh, Heron looking good here in the second quarter. Well, they're doing a good job of moving the ball, and Carnival's not shooting the ball very well at all. They, In this second quarter, they've missed their only two shots, and they got two turnovers. So four possessions, two turnovers, two misses, and they're not playing very good defense. Heron's getting too many easy looks, and as I said in the pregame, Heron's got some kids that can shoot the ball from the outside. If you leave them open, they'll take the shot. If you force them to put the ball on the floor and try to create shots off the dribble, that's when you've got Heron where you want them. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Artworks in Carterville, specializing in custom graphics and apparel. Visit them today for your Carterville spirit wear on West Plaza Drive. Now offering in-house embroidery, probably supporting the hometown Lions. You can even go online. Visit artworkscustomgraphics.com. 5.07 remaining in the first half. It is a 12-point Heron Tiger lead, 22-10. It's Carterville basketball. As on the floor, uh, Justin Johnson checks back in. Uh, Brendan Beasley, uh, Taylor Heil. It's the original starting, uh, excuse me, Luke Ford is back in, and uh, Dylan Moore stays in the game. Nice job getting the ball to Taylor Heil down low, and he's fouled and is going to go to the free throw line, as they call a foul on uh, the Heron Tigers, Ty Downing. And when you're down by 12, when you get, to, you get a chance to go to the free throw line, you've got to make these free throws. This is part of the process of getting back into the game, and you know, Heil needs to step up and hit a couple here. 
Actually, they gave that to, to Jake down in the foul as the free throw was good by Taylor Heil, and that is his first point of the game for the Carterville Lions. They've got uh, Jake Downen as two fouls. And Heil makes the second free throw as well. Two points for Taylor Heil. 4.49 showing on the clock as uh, it is down and with a shot from about 15. No good. Rebound comes off to Heil. Carterville quickly into the front court. Beasley to the left wing. Dylan Moore toward the left baseline. He's guarded by Nessler. They give it to Luke Ford at the right elbow. Kicks it out to Moore. Now between the circles. They're going to work it around the near side. Head coach Shane Hawkins yelling instructions to his Carterville Lions. And they're going to reset the offense. Taylor Heil comes out between the circles. He is guarded by Ty Downing. And uh, it's a zone defense uh, by the Heron Tigers. Down to Luke Ford. He tries to put up the shot. Tries to pass it off uh, across the baseline. And now we have a foul that's called on Taylor Heil. Yeah, Ford had nowhere to go. And he tried to make the bounce pass from one side of the lane to the other. And that's you, anytime you make a bounce pass in the lane, it's probably not going to end well. He had to force it. And... Uh, uh, then you wind up with your big guy getting a, getting a foul uh, as he uh, goes after the ball. But Heron has it into the front court. That is Nessler, Bronson Nessler. They work it down to Downen, and uh, that pass almost uh, came away with by the Heron, uh, by the Carterville Lions. Taylor Heil fights off for a rebound, and the Lions have the basketball. Down 10, 345 left in the second quarter. Bendon Beasley drives a lane kick pass out to uh, Moore. He gathers it in. They're going to work it back out to Blake Jackson. Now Taylor Ohio fakes the shot, gets it to Beasley on the right wing. Left-hand dribble. We have a... I think we've got a hold on one of the downs tied down, and I think. I believe that is tied down. That is his first foul in the ball game. Five team fouls now on uh, Heron. Four team fouls on the Carterville Lions. Beasley uh, inbounds it to uh, Justin Johnson. Uh, right baseline. Left hand dribble. Tries to get it down to Luke Ford. Ford can't handle it. And that's another turnover on the Lions. As Holloway works it across the timeline. Kicks it off to uh, Ringle who just checked back into the game. Down and now to Ringle. Now over to Holloway. Now the right side. That is uh, Matt Cagle for the Heron Tigers. As the pass comes off to Ringle, he puts up a shot, bounces around, <laughs> and uh, Ty Downing gets the rebound. That rebound just came right back to him. Yeah, that was a bad break for the uh, Lions. That ball looked like it was going to come right down to Howell and hit the side of the rim at the last minute, and Heron gets an easy one. So Carterville has it. 250 left in the uh, first half. Beasley, top of the circle, and uh, they're going to call a foul on the Heron Tigers. That is uh, Matt Cagle, the 6'1 senior. Well, the Lions need to finish this last 2.45 of the second quarter on a strong note. This is, you know, the first quarter for the Lions. They started the play well late. They need to do, they need to cut this lead to single digits before going in half and regroup. Grant Garby checks in for uh, Luke Ford for the Carterville Lions. As Beasley throws the inbound pass out top to uh, Moore. Moore to Justin Johnson. Now he hands off to Beasley, and Shane Hawkins sets the offensive play for the Lions. 235, 12-point lead for the Heron Tigers here in uh, the second quarter. Justin Johnson has it on the left wing with right-hand dribble, looks for some help, gives it to Heil. So I thought he took a step. Surprised they didn't call it, but they didn't. Carterville continues. Uh, to run the offense, they get it into Garby at the free throw line. Looks for some help and uh, give it back up to Moore. And they're going to work it to the far side now. Beasley with the basketball to Taylor Heil between the circles. Garby at the left elbow. Looks for some help. Kicks out to uh, Beasley. Loses the handle once again. And they're going to reset. Two minutes left in the second quarter. Nice defense by the Lions, not by the Tigers. Nice patience by the Lions. Beasley takes a drive and uh, no foul called as he loses the handle. It's blocked and Heron is on the run. They work it over quickly to, to uh, Cagle and uh, back to Cagle now on the right wing from Downen. Downen back on the right baseline now. They're going to work it around, be a little patient here as uh, 133 on uh, the game clock. As, uh, now they get it to DJ Spell and he uh, double dribbles and that's a turnover on the Heron Tigers. Carterville basketball. Lions, or Lions have six turnovers. Heron only has three. That's something that the Lions are going to have to do a better job of in the second half. 
take care of the basketball and don't give a Heron team that has shown the ability to shoot the three extra opportunities. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the Ike family of dealerships, uh, Ike Honda, Ike Volkswagen, and Marion, proud supporters, Carterville Lions Sports. 122 here in the second quarter, Carterville basketball, Taylor Howe to Justin Johnson, wearing the knee brace on the left knee. Nice job defensively by the down in. Uh, that is uh, Ty down in number 34 as he kicks the ball out of bounds and it's going to belong to the Lions. Yeah, Carterville's outside game has been non-existent for most of this second quarter. They've got to find a way to get their guards open. As the inbound pass comes to Taylor Heil, he uh, turnaround jumper from eight for the Lions is good. Taylor Heil now has uh, four points in this game. That's only their first field goal in the second quarter. Four, they're down 10, 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Spell, top of the circle, over to, um, that is uh, Ringle. And Ringle dops it down to uh, Ty down and ball sets on the rim. It hangs there and it comes back down. And now uh, we're going to say there was a foul on DJ Spell as he went after that rebound to push in the back. It's going to be Carterville basketball. Yeah, DJ Spell didn't get, didn't get a good position, had to go over the back. And that's Spell's second foul. 46 and a half seconds remaining in the game as uh, Kegel checks back in now for DJ Spell. Going to give DJ a spell. I Let's like see. that. Did you see what I did there? Yeah, I, I like that. See what I did? It's Carterville uh, basketball. Grant Garvey is going to be at the line shooting uh, the bonus. Seven team fouls now on the Heron Tigers. Grant Garvey at the line. He's got two points so far in the game. First free throw is uh, no good. Taylor Heil gets the rebound and uh, puts it right back in. That's six now for Taylor Heil. And Carterville is within eight with 35 seconds left in the first half. As it is uh, Ringle with the right-hand dribble guarded by Blake Jackson. Man-to-man -man defense by the Lions. And we have a timeout that is called by Heron head coach Mike Mooningham. We're going to take a break as well. We'll pause 30 seconds. You're listening to Lions Basketball. News Radio, WJPF. Just 30 here, please. Thanks to everybody watching online. Appreciate it. Back at, back at Carterville, it's Dave McKenzie with Scott Hudson. 30 seconds away from halftime here in the first basketball game for the Carterville Lions. They're down 24-16, 30 seconds remaining in the half. Well, if Carterville can get a stop here and go into half, only down eight, I think Coach Hawkins would take that considering how his team's played in the second quarter. Regroup, come back out and see what you can do in the second half. Heron has the basketball as it's uh, Jake Hartline back into the game now for the Tigers. They work it over to, uh, to uh, Holloway, now back at top of the circle. Now they're working it around, back to Holloway, right wing, 17 seconds on the clock. They give it to Drew Ringel. He takes it around the left side, Try, looks to take it down the lane, kicks it out. That is Holloway that fires from three off the back of the iron, no good. Uh, it's uh, down and with the rebound, and then the uh, three ball by Drew Ringel is no good. The Heron gets another shot, and it's blocked from behind, and uh, that is how we are gonna end the second quarter, several opportunities there for the Heron Tigers. It's 24-16, and we are at the half. Well, again, Carterville, I think a little fortunate to be only down by eight here at the half. Offensively, they really didn't do anything in that second quarter. They only had two field goals, but they're still in the game. They're still in the game. They played pretty good defense. They've got to guard the three a lot better in the second half, but we've got us a ball game. We do have us a ball game. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Crystal's Catering and more. More than you expected. More memorable for your guests. You can go online. Visit crystalsgoodfood.com for more information. It is time for your uh, City of Carterville halftime report. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in 90 seconds. It's 24-16, Heron on top of your Carterville Lions. It's Lions basketball on News Radio WJPF.
Back at Carterville High School with Dave McKenzie along with my partner Scott Hudson where we're at the half and it is 24 to 16 and Carterville got off to a good start the first quarter, slowed down a little bit in that second quarter. Yeah, I'll give Heron credit. They, they really extended their defense. The Lions had trouble with their guards getting any shots off on the outside. They tried to go the inside to Highland Ford. A couple of turnovers led to some Heron baskets. Uh, in that first half, Heron out rebounded Carterville 12 to 6. Heron was led in rebounding by DJ Spell with five. Heil led the Lions with four rebounds. Turnovers, Carterville with six, Heron with three. Shooting from the field, this might be a little bit of a misnomer, but Carterville shot 46% from the field in the first half. Heron only shot 43% in that first half, but Heron took 10 more shots than Carterville. Carterville actually made one more field goal, believe it or not, but the big difference is the offensive rebounds that Heron got. Heron had seven offensive rebounds in that first half, and Heron had four threes which helped extend this uh, lead eight points and for the there Tigers. And there were a flurry of three shots there at the end of the uh, quarter uh, for the Heron Tigers. They did a nice job on the board getting it back, uh, but was was not able to score there going in at halftime, and that's where we stand right now, 24-16. to 16. This uh, halftime report brought to you by the City of Carterville, Mayor Brad Robinson, and the entire City of Carterville are proud sponsors and supporters of Carterville Lions Sports. Carterville... They're going to have to find a way, and you said it, you hit on it a little bit earlier. They're going to have to find a way to get those guards in play and, and producing some points here this evening. Yeah, you know, if the guards are going to be guarded that closely and they can't create anything off the dribble drive or uh, get any open shots off a screen, guys like Highland Ford on the inside are going to have to really do some damage on the inside because right now, Heron is playing Heil man to man. They're not double teaming, they're not having to because the guards aren't able to uh, break through and create anything on the dribble drive. So, you know, Carter was only down by eight, and I think Shane Hawkins may not tell his team this, but I know Shane well enough that he probably feels very fortunate that he's only down by eight points now, and Carterville will get the ball to start the second half. Updating a couple other scores, uh, Carmendale beat Highland this evening, 40-35. to 35. They're playing in the Bulldog Tournament. Is that what that is? The Bulldog Tournament up in Highland. Uh, Carbondale, of course, I think in, in uh, the tournaments, they're like 13-1 and one yeah. over the last 14 games. So it's like, hey, do you want to invite Carbondale? No. So <laughs> Highland said, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll let him come back. So uh, here this evening, of course, this is... Uh, uh, the Pyramid Plus tournament that used to be at Marion for several years. And um, when Shane Hawkins came over, Carterville was able to get the, the tournament here. I've always wondered, and it's always been talked, you know, why Carterville didn't have a, a tournament. Uh, but everybody is spoken for in tournaments, and there's just, it's hard to, to kind of get something new going once you get into it because you don't want to lose any games. Yeah, at one point, the, the Pyramid tournament always rotated between Heron and Marion at times for several years. You had Massac County in it, Salem in it. Uh, there was a team from St. Louis whose, whose name uh, escapes me right now. But then Massac County decided to get out, Salem decided to get out, and it was a perfect time for Carterville, who's been bumped up to 3A this year, to not only get in and play better, you know, bigger schools, but with the facility we have here, yeah. you know, you can be part of that rotation. You know, every three years. So I think it's a win-win for Carterville. Again, you're playing very good competition every night, and you're playing bigger schools, which you're going to have to play come postseason. Of course, Carterville for years played over in Murfreesboro in the tournament to start the season there. And, um, you know, they still have two more tournaments to play in. Um, in December, right after Christmas, I think it's the 26th and 27th or the 27th and 28th, they'll be playing in Pinckneyville in the Duster Thomas Hoops Classic. And then, of course, January, back at West Frankfurt in the Midwinter Classic. In the first game this evening here, uh, of course, it was Collinsville, uh, a 41-27 win over the Mount Vernon Rams in Game 1. Game 2 saw the Marion Wildcats beat the Meridian Bobcats 68-46. Uh, Coach David Brown's first win over at Marion. Here we are at the half, and it's the Heron Tigers on top of the Carterville Lions, 24-16. Uh, we're going to take another break as the Heron Tigers come back out on the floor. When we come back, you're listening to Lions Basketball on News Radio WJPF. Let's go 90 here again, Robert. 90 here.
everybody online, thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Hope it's working okay for you. Back in Carterville, both teams are out on the floor here as we are at half, and uh, it is a 24-16 uh, uh, Heron Tiger lead. I was looking last year's championship, Scott, uh, was uh, champion was Collinsville Cahawks. They won this tournament. It started back in two the course of the entire week. There are no games tomorrow night, but they will resume on Wednesday uh, at 5.30 as Meridian is going to take on Heron. At 7 o'clock, it'll be the Lions taking on at Collinsville, and then at 8.30, Mount Vernon and uh, the Marion Wildcats. Uh, then they take off for Thursday. They'll be back Friday. Friday, starting at 5.30, Collinsville and Meridian. 7 o'clock, the Lions take on at Mount Vernon, and then at 8.30, it'll be Heron versus Marion. Then on Saturday, there's two sessions. There's a morning session that's going to start at 10 o'clock, Meridian versus Carterville, 11.30, Heron versus Mount Vernon, 1 o'clock, Marion versus Collinsville. And then the nightcap and the big game, 8.30, it's going to be the Lions taking on the Marion Wildcats. Yeah, I was very impressed with Marion against Meridian tonight in that second game. Very close game at half for the Meridian Bobcats, but Marion's bench just too deep for Meridian. I, you know, They go 7, 8, 9 deep on that Marion bench, so very impressed with the Wildcats tonight in their win over Meridian. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the Bank of Carbondale's Carterville Banking Center. The Bank of Carbondale is proud to be a locally owned and operated community bank. Stop by and visit their friendly and professional staff at the Carterville Banking Center. 200 West Plaza Drive, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Getting ready to kick off second half action here between the Lions and the Tigers. Oh, my. See yep. what they did there? Tell Again. you what, how long did you practice today on this? I've these? thought about it off and on. Okay. Once. Well, I'll tell you what, you haven't <laughs> missed a beat. So I'm going to tell you, you've, trans <laughs> you've transferred well from football to basketball. Well, there we go. <laughs> As we are under play, the Cardinal Lions, uh, they are working to the far side of the court now as it's Blake Jackson on the right wing. Brings it top of the circle to Brendan Beasley. Left-hand dribble over to Justin Johnson on the left wing. Right-hand dribble back to Beasley, back to Johnson. As uh, we are about 30 seconds into the second half as the ball is uh, given up by Justin Johnson as he tried to spin move and it's being wrestled around. And finally, the officials, they waited, 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 and they're going to say they're gonna it give was... They're going to give the ball to Carterville. Jane Hawkins called a timeout. Heron thought they had the ball, which they did. And they have granted the timeout to Carterville. So a little bit of a break for the Lions. It, uh, definitely. As Shane Hawkins is getting on as Lions right now. Boys, you gotta 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 control the ball. I know that's what he's saying, is that Justin Johnson had that turnover. He tried a spin move to spin away from the defender and just lost the handle. And that's what created the, the, the situation there. Well, a lot of dribbling and not a lot of not a lot of movement. Passing the ball. You, you've got to have movement. You know, you've got to create lanes. You've got to create mismatches. Cardinals really just standing around on the perimeter, dribbling the ball. And you know, down eight, you're still in this game. But you know, you've you've got to find a way uh, to get guys open. As uh, play is back underway, Actually, they gave it to Heron. So. Yeah, it's a turnover it on is Carterville. A turnover on Carterville. So it's Heron with the basketball. Jake Hartline here on the right wing, guarded by Brennan Beasley. They work it over to the far side. That is uh, Ringle, and we have a foul out top, and that is going to be called on Blake Jackson. Now Jackson was a little frustrated that there wasn't a foul called on Ringle with an elbow. He looked at the official, wasn't going to get the call. I think that's just frustration, uh, frustration foul on the Lions. So it's Heron basketball. 7.15 and left here as they throw it into the backcourt. They work it around to the far side. 
for the Heron Tigers, and it's tipped out of bounds. Nice job defensively by Luke Ford. <laughs> Luke Ford, he's kind of an imposing figure out there. He is. He is like a man-child, I'm telling you. He, you know, honestly, he looks bigger in a basketball uniform than he does in a football uniform. He is. And you got to stand next to him. He just... I'd rather not. <laughs> he is. <laughs> He does a nice job out there as uh, Heron works it over to uh, Nessler. Nessler <coughs> that passes tip, but Heron controls, and then we have a push from behind. And uh, that's going to be on DJ Spell. Or do you leave Spell in and take a chance on him picking up his fourth? Carterville down eight, 650 left in the third quarter. As uh, they have it into the front court, as uh, Heil turns at the free throw line, looks for some help, kicks it off to Beasley. Beasley uh, was trying to work the give and go to Heil, but fortunately the pass uh, was picked up by Jackson, and then he immediately turns it over. And Heron comes the other way as it is uh, Ringel in the backcourt, makes a move, but it, now it's Hartline being guarded man-to-man -man by Beasley. Drive, kick out pass to uh, Nessler. Three ball no good. And uh, Luke Ford gets the rebound, and he's fouled from behind. The foul is going to be on Jake Downing, and that is the third foul on Jake Downing. And the Lions have not been able to take advantage of this slow start by the Lions, or excuse me, by the Tigers. Lions with two turnovers. Down eight. Beasley tried to drive, held off nicely by uh, Hartline. They're going to reset, working to the left side. That is Justin Johnson, left wing. Crap, nice uh, swing pass over to Luke Ford, back door, and that's uh, Luke Ford's first bucket of the game, and Carterville now is within six. Yeah, that was a pass from the left wing to the right to low block. That's a dangerous pass, but it got there. And they got the job done. So Heron into the front court. That is uh, down in spin move, puts it up, uh, banks it off the glass. And uh, that is uh, four points now in the game for Jake Downing. Yeah, he just went by like Luke Ford. Luke never moved his feet to block off on the baseline. Lob pass down to Luke Ford on the right block. His shot is blocked from behind and uh, bounces around, bounces around. It's going to be off the Lions, and it's going to belong. Oh, they're going to say it was off of Heron, and uh, it is going to be. I think that's the right call. Heil went up high to get the rebound. There was a couple of Tigers there, and it went out of bounds. I, I think that's the right call. Of course, we're on the other end of the court. DJ Spell remains in the game for uh, the uh, Tigers. Thought they might bring him out, but they don't. Lob pass to uh, Justin Johnson. He resets. Left wing, guarded by Spell. Kicks it out, top of the key. That between the circles to Jackson. Now to Beasley. Behind the back dribble. Sets the offense for the Lions. Justin Johnson back to Beasley. Now far side to Blake Jackson. Down low to Luke Ford on the right block. Uh, kicks it out to Justin Johnson for three left side. Boom! That's a big shot by Justin Johnson. Well, they had to collapse on four down low because he was about two feet from the basket. And they get the big three. So Heron comes down the other way as uh, Bronson Nessler buries a three ball from the left wing. Yeah, you cannot let Nessler... No... Lions did not get back down the floor quickly enough. Carterville on the in the front court. It is Brennan Beasley, right wing. Uh, backs it up. They're going to reset as uh, Luke Ford way out high for the Lions. And uh, he takes it back to Beasley. Pat, a little sloppy with the pass, but Carterville controls. Beasley traps himself on the baseline. Kicks it over to Jackson. Jackson works his way down. Little layup runner is good for Blake Jackson. That's his first bucket of the game. And yeah, Carterville oh. gets the ball. Back again. It was out of bounds. Blake Jackson knocked it off of Ringel. Off his leg, out of bounds. And Carterville pulled to within six. Nice job by the Lions here. Making a run on the Heron Tigers. Down six, 29-23, 4.06 left in the third quarter. Like the intensity of the Lions right now. And I think Shane Hawkins is loving the intensity. As uh, Beasley now has it between the circles. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Down six. Johnson back to Beasley. Top of the key. Tries to drive. Going to kick it back out and bring it back out to the left wing. To Justin Johnson. Work it over to Jackson. Now to Garby. Grant Garby who just checked in for the Lions. Blake Jackson. Now to Beasley. Left wing. Man-to-man -man defense by the Heron Tigers. Nice job. Beasley's wanting to work that baseline. He's trying to take it down, but nice job by the Tigers defensively. Now it's Heil at the left elbow. Gives it to Jackson. He drives, and the ball is tipped away, and it goes out of bounds. They're going to say it's off the Lions. That's a turnover 
on Carterville. Yeah, just not a lot of cohesion on that uh, possession by the by the Lions. Heil, I think, has to get more involved offensively. You got to get the ball to him on the post or the low block. Another turnover on the Heron Tigers is that it was uh, Brennan Beasley that was uh, guarding. I didn't see who that was. Actually, that was Hartline that uh, was working on Beasley, and it goes off of Hartline, Carterville basketball. Yeah, Heron with their third turnover. This is where Carterville's got to take advantage of these extra opportunities. Starting to see the, the guards get more in the play now for the Lions, though, as Heil takes it to the rack and uh, bounces out. No good. Spell with the rebound. Here come the Heron Tigers as it is our wrangle with the basketball. Top of the circle, near side to Hartline. He works it down, tries to get it to spell, and uh, it is Taylor Howell that's able to come away with it. Now it's on the floor again, and Carterville comes away again. Now they can run. There goes Beasley on the far side. Kick pass to uh, Jackson. Back to Beasley for three, and he buries it from the left wing. Lions within three. Got the crowd back into it. 29-26. Two and a half left. Now Carter Heron with the basketball, rather. Fires from three for Nessler. He hits it for the Heron Tigers. That is 12 now for Bronson Nessler. You cannot leave him open. The Lions got a little bit ragged on defense. Lost their man, and they paid for it. Back a six-point lead for the Tigers. 2.15 on the clock in the third quarter. We have a whistle. And uh, they're going to call a foul on the Tigers. And they're going to call it on uh, Jake Hartline, number two, with the elbow. That is the first foul on Hartline here in uh, the game. That's a third team foul in the half for the Tigers. Tigers have six threes in this game. Carter still only down by six. Lions broadcast brought to you by the Ike family of dealerships, Ike Honda and Ike Volkswagen of Marion. Proud supporters of Lions Sports. The ball is turned over by the Lions. Heron runs it down the far end and puts the shot up by Nessler. Spell kicks it out. Back to Nessler. Three ball, no good. Now Spell gets a rebound again. Down to Downen. Downen works hard and is able to get that ball put right back in. He scores, and it's an eight-point lead now for the Tigers. Heron into the front court. Justin Johnson for three, wide open, no good. Rebound is controlled by Blake Jackson for the Lions are going to reset. Over to Heil from 18, bangs it in from there for Taylor Heil. He has eight points now in the game. Back to a six-point lead. Much needed basket by the Lions. It's again, a reverse layup, no good, and they're going to say the ball was out of bounds off of Justin Johnson. 117 left in the third quarter. It's a six-point lead for the Heron Tigers. It's going to be Heron basketball. This Lions broadcast brought to you by Artworks of Carterville, specializing in custom graphics and apparel. Visit them today for your Carterville spirit wear. Go online, artworkscustomgraphics.com. Uh, it's a nice kick out pass to uh, Rangel. He drives and uh, hits from about 12 feet for the Tigers. That's eight now for Drew Rangel. Carterville with the basketball. Into the front court. One minute left in the third quarter. Tyler, or excuse me, Dylan Moore gives it up to Taylor Heil. And we have a foul that is called on uh, Ty Downen. That is the second foul now. Beasley triggers it in to Moore. Moore puts a little runner up and he's fouled. So he's going to go to the line. That is uh, Dylan Moore, the 5'11". Sophomore guard for the Heron Tigers. That's five team fouls on Heron. We're still in the third quarter, so Lions will be going to the bonus probably early in the fourth. So Dylan Moore is at the line. No points in the game so far, but he's shooting two here as he was fouled while shooting. The first free throw is no good. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the city of Carterville. Mayor Brad Robinson and the entire city of Carterville. Proud sponsors and supporters of Carterville Lions Sports. Dylan Moore is at the line, shooting the second free throw. It's up, and it is no good. The ball uh, bounces around. Herring controls as it comes off to Bronson Nessler. It is Hartline with the basketball across the timeline, guarded by Justin Johnson. Out top front, J.J. does a nice job not fouling. They kick it out to uh, Ringel. Ringel kicks it over to Nessler to the left wing. Now they're going to reset. They give it to Downen. Down and turns around, guarded by Taylor Heil. Kick out to Nessler. Now they work it over to the far side. 
as uh, that is a uh, wrangle brings it back Heron being very patient as they're working for the last shot here in the third quarter 10 seconds left in the third near side to wrangle he loses the handle on it they're going to call a foul on Cartnerville's Blake Jackson and that's really not a bad foul because it's not going to send Heron to the line they, they have to inbounds the, the ball now now they have to you know come up with another play so not that bad a foul when you look at it. Six seconds remaining here in the third. It is a uh, eight-point lead for the Tigers. They work it down to down and right baseline. Three seconds. He loses track. Carterville gets it back. Justin Johnson, he tracks it down. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the buzzer sounds. And that's how we end the third quarter. It is 36-28. Heron on top of the Carterville Lions. You're listening to Lions Basketball. News Radio, WJPF. 90 seconds here, please. 90, please. Back in Carterville, the Lions are down 36-28, uh, heading to the fourth quarter. Heron has the basketball as we start play here in the fourth. Thanks for joining us here on News Radio WJPF. Heron has the ball uh, tipped out of bounds off the Carterville Lions by Justin Johnson. It's Heron basketball. Heron shot 62% in the third. Carterville 50%. Heron's basketball. The Tigers 36-28 lead as we begin play here in the fourth quarter as they are in the, their road Tigers. Yeah, he got it up and over Ohio, got it to go in. Lions got the work cut out for him now, down by 10. 7.24 left in the ball game. Justin Johnson controls between the circles, sets the offense for the Lions. Heron in man-to-man -man defense. Blake Jackson on the left wing. Over to Taylor Heil. Looks for some help. Back to Jackson, left wing. Carterville looking for the cut man through. They're trying to run the offense. Finally, they get moving. Jackson, left wing. Taylor Heil between the circles. Brendan Beasley, right wing now. Back top of the circle. Justin Johnson works it inside, kicks it out. Blake Jackson dribbles on the right side, pushes off, and they're going to say... They're going to call it on Heron's uh, Drew Ringle. That is the third on Ringle. I thought... Uh, Jackson got away with the push. Yeah, could have gone the other way. He, Jackson got the forearm into the chest, but the official staying right there called it against Heron. So it's Carterville basketball. They're lucky they get it. They bring it out front. That is Dylan Moore, number 20, into the game for the Lions. Beasley's going to fire from three off the iron. No good. Nice rebound by Johnson. Looks for some help. He has the ball slapped out of his hands. And it's Heron basketball. They're bringing it the other way. Hartline into the front court, guarded by Jackson. Near side, down in the corner to Ringle. Now to Spell, right elbow, makes a move at the free throw line. Kick out pass. They're going to work it back around. Bring it near side to Ringle. He drives, kicks it over to Nestler. 4-3 off the iron, no good. And we have a foul that is being called on Jake Downen. That is going to be four fouls now on the 6-4 senior for Heron. Seventh team foul. That could play a factor as this fourth quarter goes along because Carterville will end up going to the free throw line for the bonus from here on out. 
for the rest of the game. So Jake checks out, his brother checks in. We have 6.20 left here in the ball game. At the line is going to be Taylor Heil shooting the one and one. And, and he out. misses. Man, they are not hitting those free throws. As uh, the Heron Tigers are into the front courts. DJ Spell makes a move in the lane, kicks it out to Hartline. Back to Spell. Works on nice on Moore. Thought there should have been a foul there, one way or the other. And Spell walked as well. It, but it wasn't called. So Heron works it around the other side, and we have a timeout that is called by Heron head coach Mike Mooningham. We're going to take a break as well. We'll be back in uh, 60 seconds. You're listening to Lions Basketball, News Radio, WJPF. <coughs> Woo, my throat is burning tonight. 60 here, please, 60. I saw your text, so we'll try to, we'll try to work those in as good best we can. Thanks, everybody, watching online. Appreciate it. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating, downtown Carterville for over 30 years. Certified York dealer and services all brands. Call 985-2502. Charlie's Air Conditioning and Heating.com. Heron basketball, near side, near courts, rather, as we have 550 left in the ball game. They work at the heart line. They try to get it down to spell, and they're going to call Justin Johnson of the Lions for a hold. Yeah, he just couldn't get around D.J. Spell to deny the pass to the inside. That's only the third team foul on Carterville in the second half. 5.49 remaining here. It's a 38-28, 10-point lead for the Heron Tigers. Heron basketball as it's uh, down and out top of the key to Nestler. Now Spell makes a move, but he kicks it back out to Nestler, top of the key. They work it around to the far side. Hartline being guarded by Johnson. Brings it top of the key. Now to Nessler. Back to Hartline over the far side. Now they're going to work it into down and right block. He and walked. Uh, he walked again. And he's hurt. I think he might have twisted an ankle. But he's down the court. The other Ford puts the shot up. It's good. And he's fouled. Luke Ford is heading to the li line for the Lions. Well, this could get the Lions back to within seven. And give him a fighting chance in the final 5-15. D.J. Spell has called for his fourth foul, the eighth team foul on the Heron Tigers here in the second half. So let's see if Luke Ford can hit his free throw. 38-30, 5.15 left. Ford's free throw bounces around in. Converts the three-point play. He's got five points in the game. And it's Dylan Moore that checks in for Justin Johnson now for the Carterville Lions. If I'm the Lions, when I have the ball, I go straight at DJ Spell on the Get inside. Get Absolutely. him out of the game. Absolutely. As uh, Heron, uh, they work it into the near court. Man to man, full court press put on by the Lions. But Heron has it as it is uh, Nessler that shoots from about 12. No good. Carterville controls the rebound. They're on the run. Beasley to the right wing. They're going to slow it down, back it up. Beasley makes a move into the lane. Tries to dump it down to Heil. Bad pass. Not a good pass by by Brendan Beasley. So another turnover on the Lions. Heron into the front court. Hartline, left hand dribble guarded by Moore for of the Lions. Top of the circle, drives the right lane, kicks it off to uh, Downing. Downing, down and back over to the far side. They're gonna work it around. Downing now checks it down to Spell. And we have a foul that is called on Carterville. I believe that's gonna be on Taylor Heil. Lions have had several opportunities to take control of this ball game. You go back, a big three by Carter in the third quarter that pulled them within three, 29-26. Heron comes down, and somebody loses Bronson Nessler. 
he buries the three, and that kind of changed the momentum of this game. It's been a game of runs for both teams, uh, but uh, and now there's no foul there by Beasley as he may have flopped. DJ Spell with a little up and under for the Heron. Tanner Heil is not a, a point guard. He shouldn't be handling the ball out there like that. As uh, Dylan Moore is falling all over the floor three times. Finally, they call him four. Well, Taylor Heil, 6'6". Six, six. They called the foul on Luke Ford. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. When you bring the ball down low, whether it's dribbling or you get a rebound and you bring it down around your waist, you just made everybody the same size as you. Yep. And unfortunately, as you said, Taylor Howell's not a guard. He tried to do a little bit too much. The ball was tipped away. Heron with the basketball. Halloway, top of the key to DJ Spell. Back to Halloway. Man-to-man -man defense by the Lions. 3.50 left. Down, Carterville down nine. As it's Halloway around, left-hand dribble, top of the circle. Gets the pick from Downen, but it's no good. And uh, now it's to Spell. Spell puts up a shot. His shot is no good. Justin Johnson gathers it in. Carterville heading the other way. He takes it into the front court. Down to Moore as uh, the Carterville wow. Lions run into each other. Beasley and Dylan Moore. Dylan Moore has been a, uh, he's been like a dust mop out there in the last uh, uh, minute. Maybe like a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. As uh, we have a foul being called on Carterville's Brennan Beasley. That's the first foul on Beasley in the game. Six team foul now for the Lions. Carter Down was, nine. Yeah, Cardinals had their opportunities in this second half to play well. Now Heron's going to turn the ball over. That's their seventh turnover of the second half. But again, that's seven extra opportunities the Lions have had tonight in the second half, and they haven't taken advantage of it. So Carterville has the ball after the Tigers turnover. Down nine, into the front court, Taylor Heil between the circles. It's uh, Luke Ford over to Justin Johnson. JJ holds, look for some help. Wants to get it to Ford, but he kicks it down to Heil from eight, and that is good for Taylor Heil. Nice job by the Lions running the offense there. That's 10 now for Taylor Heil. Tigers are in the front court to pass oh. tip by Blake Jackson, but they're going to say he fouled as he went up to get that ball. I don't agree with that call, but that's one of those 50-50 calls that could have gone either way, and it didn't go Carterville's way. Third foul on Blake Jackson. Seventh team foul now. So Heron is going to be in the bonus for the last 255 of the game. Grant Garby checks in for number 33, Luke Ford. And uh, at the line for the Tigers is going to be Hayden Holloway. He's got two points so far in the game. At the line, shooting the one and one, and he hits the first. So he'll pick up the bonus here, pushes that lead to back to eight points for the Heron Tigers. Holloway set for his second. Off the back of the iron, no good. Carterville controls the tip. So it is an eight-point lead for the line for the Tigers right now. And you can't take a lot of time on these possessions. You've got to get a quick shot. As uh, Carterville works it down to Heil, Heil turn around, bank shot is good. Tyler's, Taylor's really come alive here as he's got 12 points in the game. Carterville down six. And there's a blocking foul that is called on uh, Blake Jackson, that is going to be the fourth foul on uh, Blake and now the eighth team foul on the Lions. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by Crystal's Catering. No event too small or too large. Crystal's Catering will consume a, rather customize a menu to fit your budget and preference. You can go online, visit crystalsgoodfood.com. Don't forget, at the end of the game, uh, we have to choose our Joe's Lawn Care player of the game. And then uh, we'll get into our Banterra Bank postgame show, uh, coaches show with head coach Shane Hawkins as well as uh, Halloway is at the line. Did he make both of those? He, he made both of them. Okay, that's what I thought. He hits both ends of the free throw, so it's 43-35. Heron 
on top. Into the front court, Grant Garmy to Taylor Heil. They work a nice give and go down to Taylor Heil and he wedges the ball in the rim between the rim and the backboard. So it's going to continue to be Carterville basketball. Yeah, the possession arrow spell blocked the uh, shot from behind. So Beasley is going to trigger the inbounds for the Lions from the baseline. Blake Jackson steps into a three ball in, out, good for Blake Jackson. Five down for Blake in the game. And we have a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout as well. It's a full one. We'll pause. No, actually, it's a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it uh, here. This Lions broadcast is brought to you by the Bank of Carbondale, Carterville Banking Center, now offering the convenience of mobile banking. Stay connected on the go with the Bank of Carbondale's mobile banking app. For information on the features of mobile banking and how to enroll, visit the website, tboc.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Well, the Carterville's got it down to a... 43-38 deficit with 2.16 to go. Now they're going to have to get a turnover, create a turnover on defense, and start getting some shots up quickly. There's still, there's still a chance, but they've got to create turnovers on defense. If they can't, they're going to have to start fouling and force Heron to go to the free throw line and win this game. 43-38. Heron on top of the Lions. 2.16 on the clock in the game. It's Heron basketball as they have it in the backcourt. Some pressure put on by the Lions defensively, but Heron brings it across the timeline. They break it over, or get it over to uh, Jay Cart line. Now he's between the circles. Works it over to Ringle. Ringle now baseline to Nessler. Nessler is uh, guarded there. Nice job by Blake Jackson, and that's a turnover on the Heron Tigers. Carterville basketball. Eighth turnover by Heron. That's one thing that's kept Carterville in this game. Now we're down by five. How big would a three look here? That would be huge as we have 152 remaining in the game. Taylor Heil between the circles. Grant Garby over to Blake Jackson. Fires from three. Oh, just buries that shot. Eight now for Blake Jackson. Carterville down two. 135 left in the game. Heron has trouble in the backcourt. They do control it, though. DJ Spell wide open. Now Heron can slow it down as they have a two-point lead with under a minute and a half to go. In the front court, Heron with the basketball. That is uh, Rangel to Hartline. DJ Spell drives, puts up the runner. No good. The rebound comes off to the Carterville Lions. Taylor Heil. So Carterville is down two with about uh, 50, uh, 65 seconds left in the game. Beasley with the left-hand dribble. That is Grant Garby wearing number 32. Taylor Heil. Now they work at the down to uh, Jackson, his pass, it was a little give and go to Taylor Heil, and it's tipped out of bounds. It's going to be Carterville basketball. Well, if Heil gets that ball, he's got a lane to the, uh, to the uh, hole. They've been working that play all evening, and uh, so hopefully he'll be, su be successful, for successful for him now. As the pass comes out front, Blake Jackson, right-hand dribble. Uh, to Beasley, he drives the baseline. He was trying to get the pass off to Taylor Heil, and he turns it over again. You cannot make bounce passes in, in the, the lane. lane. You nope. just cannot do that. You know, and part of the problem, I think, is Beasley's so small, he gets lost in there with the big guys. As uh, DJ Spell hits a little right-hand runner. That is uh, 10 points now for Spell, and it's a four-point lead, under 30 to go in the game. Carterville in the front court. Blake, or Shane Hawkins wants a timeout. And he finally gets it. It's a full. We're going to take a timeout as well. 45-41. Heron on top of the Lions. You're listening to Lions Basketball. News Radio, WJPF. 60 here, please. 60.
Back at Carterville, it's Dave McKenzie along with Scott Hudson. 25.2 seconds left in the game. And it's Carterville basketball. They are down four, 45-41. So, still, still time. You don't necessarily need a three here, but you've got to score quickly. And play good deep. Beasley into the front court. That is Grant Garvey. Gets it to Heil at the free throw line. Works it over to J uh, Jackson. Jackson guarded. Good. Nice job defensively. Too long. And uh, he is, uh, we've got a foul on the Heron Tigers. They're going to call it on uh, Nessler. The second foul on Nessler, and that's going to put Jackson at the line, shooting the one and one. Well, you got to make free throws. you got to make these. And they haven't done it. No. This evening. We have a timeout that's being called by the Heron Tigers. Asking for a full, we will take one as well. Let's pause. We'll be back in 60 seconds. It's Lions Basketball, News Radio, WJPF. Sixty here, please. Sixty. Okay, good. Back at Carterville, 11 and a half seconds left in the ball game. Carterville down four, 45-41. And at the line is going to be Blake Jackson shooting the one and one. Got to hit the free throws. Carterville's not done a good job of that this evening. But time to do it is now as uh, the first one rolls around and it's good for Jackson. Cutting the lead now to three points, 45-42. Yeah, if he hits this one then, if you can't, if you can't steal the inbounds pass, then you've got to foul quickly. They'll pick up full court press uh, if on the make, and it's good by Jackson. He's got 10 now, and they sub in. Uh, Garby comes out. Moore comes in for the Lions. So it's full court to go for Heron Tigers, 11.6 seconds. Um, and uh, fouled immediately by Taylor Heil. At the line is going to be Bronson Nestler. Uh, with nine seconds left in the game. And Heron hasn't gone to the free throw line a lot tonight. Neither team has, no. actually. Nope. So at the line is going to be Bronson Nessler, the 6'1 junior for the Heron Tiger. He's the leading scorer in the game for both teams. Cardinal's got to hope he misses this one. If he makes this one, it might be lights out. Second one is good by Nessler. That's 14 now. Carterville needs has a two possession game. They're down four. The ball is uh, knocked out. Shane Hawkins yelling instructions. Gets it to Jackson. Fires from three off the iron. No good. Hits off the top of the backboard. And uh, it's going to go the other way. And that'll do it. 2.9 seconds left. And that's a four point lead. All Heron needs to do is inbound. And that is going to be the ball game. And Carterville fouls on the inbound pass. Foul is called on Carterville's. That's what's going to be shooting two. The foul was on uh, Brennan Beasley, his second. So Nessler's at the line shooting two. First one is good. Nessler has 15 in the game. He's our leading candidate for the player of the game, I would say. Yep. Second one is off the Carterville Lions in the first game uh, of the Pyramid Plus Tournament here at Carterville High School. We are going to go on and get into our Banterra Bank post-game show. Coming up, we'll choose our player of the game, and uh, Carterville head coach Shane Hawkins will join us. It's all on your 90, please.
insured and your car is safe and dependable, take it to Aaron's Auto Center in Marion. Hey, Cardinal Lion fans, this is Jim with Aaron's Auto Center. Be the first to come in and tell me the final score of tonight's game. And I'll Back at Carterville, we just saw the Hammer Tigers knock off the Carterville Lions in the first game of the Pyramid Plus Tournament, 49 to 43. And uh, I think it was a good first uh, first game for both teams here this evening. Nice way to start off, and you know Carterville had opportunity after opportunity to uh, take the lead in the game. They just weren't quite able to, as they weren't able to convert on their free throws uh, during the game, and um, they were. Just uh, never really able to get uh, get that lead. Two uh, had a chance to either tie the game or take the lead with a three, and they had one of those costly turnovers uh, that kind of was their bugaboo all night long. Um, they, they gave up six threes in the game, but give Carterville credit. They fought. They didn't give up. They got back in the game. As I said, had a chance to tie it, take the lead late, uh, but they just couldn't get the – they could not get the turnover. They could not get the big basket when they needed it, uh, but – you know, some positives to look forward to going into the next game. They were able to come back and make a game of it because at one point, in about midway through the fourth quarter, it looked like Heron might pull away and win easily, but that didn't happen. So we have to choose our uh, Joe's Lawn Care player of the game. Uh, Joe's Lawn Care in Carterville, 406 uh, Red Howerton Street. Uh, rain or shine, sleet or snow, call Joe. They specialize in commercial and residential lawn care, landscaping maintenance, spring and fall cleanup, snow removal, property maintenance, bush hogging, um, also tree trimming, removal, equipment repair. It's Joe's Lawn Care. You can always reach them at 534-8148, Joe's Lawn Care in Carterville. Who is your choice for player of the game? Well, you know, there were there were good uh, individual efforts by both teams, but I thought, you know, Nestler was probably the guy that was the deciding factor. You, I go back, Carterville's only down 29-26 after hitting a big three. They had all the momentum. Heron comes down, and somehow, some way, Carterville lost. Uh, we're not aware of where Nestler was at on the floor, and he buried a three from the yeah. far corner, and that just sucked all the life out of Carville at that time. Then he hit four straight free throws to seal the victory down the uh, at the end. So uh, Nestler would be my pick for star of the he, game. He was the go-to man for the Heron Tigers to put this game away. And so we'll make uh, uh, Bronson Nestler. He had uh, 16 points this evening, and he was the, the guy that put the game away for the Heron Tigers. He is our Joe's Lawn Care uh, player of the game here for the first game of the tournament. Some stats uh, in the game. Heron out-rebounded Carterville 18-16. to Heil led Carterville with seven. Spell led Heron with nine. Turnovers. Carterville with 14. Some of those very costly. 11 turnovers for Heron. Both teams, both teams shot 47% from the field. Heron had six threes. Carterville ended up with five threes. I think Shane Hawkins is going to be happy with his team, though. They made mis some mistakes. You don't, well... You know, in the interview you did with Shane earlier this week, he said that this is a tournament where Carvel could go five and zero, they could go zero and five. You know, you're going to play good teams every night. Uh, you, again, first game of the year. You know, you're upset, you lost, but you got to take some positives out of this. And again, Carterville came back, had a chance to tie it or take the lead, and they did not lead this entire game. They did not have the lead no. at any point in this game. So that would have been a heck of a comeback to win this late. It didn't happen. But, you know, this, this Carnival team is not void of talent. It's not as if, oh, no, oh, woe is me. The Carnival's just got to you know, play better from start to finish and cut down on the costly mistakes. Yep. You cannot turn the ball over because a team like Karen can, who can shoot the ball well from the outside, every time you turn the ball over, that's an extra opportunity for them to score. And a lot of times tonight, they did score on Carnival's turnovers. We're going to take another break. We are expecting head coach Shane Hawkins to make his way here to our uh, broadcast position at the school. 
Uh, it was the Heron Tigers over the Carterville Lions tonight, 49 to 43 in the first game uh, for both teams in the uh, Pyramid Plus tournament here at Carterville. If you're listening to Lions Basketball, News Radio, WJPF. Let's go 90 here, please. 90. How are we doing on, on spots? Back at Carterville High School, it's Dave McKenzie and uh, Scott Hudson. We're waiting on head coach uh, Shane Hawkins to make his way here for the uh, postgame show. <coughs> One thing about basketball, a lot more talking than there is for football. Well, that's true. <clears throat> that's true. And, you know, for Carterville, uh, unlike football, You've only got one day of rest before you come back and play again. In football, you've got a whole week to think about a loss uh, or a win. But uh, this is a tough tournament. We talked about it many times coming into tonight. Uh, this is not going to be an easy tournament. I think in the you know in the big picture, this is going to this tournament is going to work out well for Carnival. You're playing bigger teams. You're playing some very good teams. Even the smallest school here, Meridian, which is one A school, very talented. They get up and down the floor. They're going to give a lot of people fits in this tournament. So this is a tournament where Coach Hawkins can kind of gauge who I can count on. I think I think most importantly for Coach Hawkins, he's got to find out who he can count on coming off the bench because he's got to get quality minutes out of at least two guys. I, I'm going to say at least two guys coming off that bench to help them with scoring, to help them defensively. Uh, hopefully by the end of this tournament, he'll he'll know who those two or three may be. But uh, even even you look at guys that that may have struggled tonight, like. You know, basically, the offense struggled. They only put up, what, 43 points. And the second quarter was... It was horrendous. It was really bad for the Lions, so... You only score 43 points, and you know you've got much better offensive talent than yeah. that on the floor. It's game one. It's not the end of the world. There's about, what, 30 or more left in the season, but you got to build on the positives. Uh, I think the big positive is, again, Carterville down 43-41 with the ball, had the momentum... But they turned the ball over on that dreaded bounce pass in the lane. And uh, Heron hit some big free throws down the stretch and won the game by four or six. And that was the final 49-43 as we look at scoring for the Carterville Lions. It was uh, Blake Jackson with uh, 10 points this evening. Um, it, Justin Johnson wound up with six. Uh, Brendan Beasley had eight points. Grant Garby got on the board. He had a pair. Uh, five points for Luke Ford for the 6'6 junior, and it was Taylor Heil that led all Carterville scores this evening. He had 12 on the evening. As you look at Heron scoring this evening, it was uh, Hayden Halloway, the 6'2 sophomore. He winds up with five in the game. As we said, uh, and made him our player of the game, Bronson Nessler uh, with 16 points, and he is the one that put the game away at the end, hitting all of his free throws for the Heron Tigers and uh, our, our Joe's Lawn Care player of the game this evening. DJ Spell winds up with uh, four fouls, but he has 10 points, played a good ball game, and was able to hang in there and not foul out this evening for the uh, Heron Tigers. It was uh, Jake Downen who uh, had six for the evening, and uh, Drew Rangel played a good ball game as well. He winds up with eight, tied down, and winds up with four. 49-43 was the final. Coach Shane Hawkins is making his way uh, up the uh, to our broadcast position here in uh, the corner, and... Um, 
one, one other thing, and again, uh, you know, a guy like Luke Ford, 6'6", you know, he got five points tonight. I think you, you, you want to see him around that 10, 12-point range every game because any time he can make things happen on the inside, it's going to open it up for Taylor Heil. And I think you've got to have those two feeding off each other. Head coach Shane Hawkins joins us on our Banterra Bank uh, post-game show this evening. Coach, and uh, um, tough loss. Yeah, and I, we knew it would be tough. Two weeks is a short, short amount of time to uh, to get a team prepared, and um, you know it's we've had 13 practices with them, and we've tried to put a lot in. And uh, there's times we look lost offensively; we couldn't get people in the right spot. Um, so what, we were really bogged down early offensively, and uh, and we've spent more time offensively uh, because I knew it was going to be a lot different than what they were probably used to. Uh, so we've probably spent more time, way more time offensively than we have defensively. And, uh, and that showed because we gave up baskets off of uh, just not being in the right spot, not getting off to help, not jumping to the ball. Our pressure, we didn't really get after them. Uh, they don't handle it extremely well, but we could never get in a rhythm where we could to go pressure and, uh, and kind of force the issue a little bit. And um, you know what I told them after the game, it's a process. It's uh uh, I told him that in the summer, and I told him that the first day of practice. It, it's a process, and uh, unfortunately, this is part of the process. And uh, kind of learn how to uh, we go out there and, and play, and now we get a chance to learn from it. And as long as we can come back and learn and learn from our mistakes tomorrow in film and in practice, and uh, we don't make the same mistakes on Wednesday, then we'll become a better basketball team because of it. But uh, if we come out and play the same way and make the same mistakes on Wednesday, then um, and obviously we haven't learned a whole lot from, from tonight. It was a game that you only saw, you saw your Lions only put 43 points on the board a second quarter that was just, yeah. it was just poor. And that, yeah. that really did them in and not hitting free throws when they, yeah. when they had the opportunity. Yeah, we, we, we fought back. I, I, the part I liked about it is we yeah. really fought back. Yes. We had a chance. I thought in the first half they had a chance to put us away. Uh, they got it to 12 and, man, you know, they get it to 16 and we're in real trouble in the half. And we fought back and got it to eight at the half. And, uh, we got it to four, I think, one time in the third quarter, and uh, so we were there. We just could never uh, get it, you know. We could never sustain it. Something happened. They got every 50-50 ball there was, any loose ball, anything that got batted. Uh, we never went and got. There was a couple of loose balls that we kind of waited for it to roll to us, and uh, they come in and die for it. And, and that's what you're supposed to do. And uh, so it's that type of toughness stuff that that, that um, gave them extra possessions. We lost a couple possessions of it. Uh, and I think a couple 50-50 balls in the first half, uh, it got batted around or knocked to the ground. They pick up and score on a couple of them. And, uh, you know, that's a four uh, or eight-point turnaround uh, just on that one loose ball. And uh, But, again, it's a process, and uh, we'll go back to work tomorrow and uh, see what we can do on Wednesday night. Coach, a couple of the key plays in the game, I thought, in the third quarter, uh, you got a big three to cut the Tiger lead to 29-26, come down the floor, and, and – Nestler's wide open in the corner, buries a three, so any momentum you had from that big three just kind of went out the window. And then, late in the game, you know, you hadn't led the entire game. You get the ball back, I think it was 43-41. You got the ball, you got a chance to tie, if not go ahead with a three, and then you had the turnover in the lane. Uh, those are the two the two plays that stand out to me tonight. And, and, and you're, ex you're exactly right. And a lot of it was, uh, I don't know how many turnovers we had, but it seemed like our turnovers were crucial. I mean, it's... You had 14. 14, that's too much because they didn't press. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, a lot of them was poor decision. It was uh, trying to do too much. When you get into the paint, it's that's where the defense goes. There's too many bodies in the paint. Uh, your kick has got to be to the outside. And uh, we had people in the right spots because uh, we have spots that we get to on penetration. And uh, we just didn't connect. We tried to, uh, we tried to go for... Uh, the high risk pass and the ball gets kicked around, lays in the middle of paint, and those 50 50 balls we never got. Um, but a very good game. It's, it's one the, to start the season. It's a, it's a challenge. And, uh, but I think every game we play is going to be a challenge. Uh, we're going to have to be able to answer the call and uh, show some toughness, both offensively and defensively. Uh, go making free throws down the stretch. Uh, this is a toughness game, it's, it's, it's a battle. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll come back on uh, Wednesday night and look uh, look a little bit better. What did you see? The, you got to scout the games before uh, the Goliaths. Wednesday night, you're back in action, 7 o'clock. What did you see in the opponent for Wednesday? Uh, you know, it's it's a good tournament. I knew that coming in. And, uh, you know, Collinsville's uh, probably has the best player in the tournament in, in Midget. Uh, and, and they really struggled early. 
uh, not Mount Vernon, you know, slowed it down on them. They could never get enough flow, and they struggled with that early. Uh, but they are explosive, and uh, them and, and Kendrick Brown, uh, they got going a little bit there in the second half and made some shots. And uh, so we're going to have to be better defensively. We're going to have to shut down penetration because you were going to see penetration on Wednesday night uh, from Collinsville's perimeter players because they're going to put it on the bounce or put it on the floor and uh, and look to create. So we're going to have to get better defensively and. Uh, hopefully we can kind of refine some things offensively and get into a better rhythm uh, offensively on Wednesday night. That's your uh, Carterville head coach Shane Hawkins on our Banter Bank Coaches Show. Coach, good game. We'll uh, talk to you on Wednesday night. Right, Actually, I won't. He will, but I'll be gone. So. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> head coach Shane Hawkins on our Banter Bank uh, uh, post game show. 49-43. The uh, Heron Tigers over the Carterville Lions in the first game of the Pyramid Plus Tournament. Your thoughts, Scott? Well, again, I think you heard uh, Coach Hawkins talk about a lot of things that we did uh, throughout the game. You know, missed opportunities, uh, not getting to the 50-50 balls, um, you know, breaking down a little bit on defense, having guys in the right spot offensively, but just not able to get, getting, get the ball to those guys. Uh, and as he said, it's a process. I mean, this is a fairly young Carterville team. Uh, they're going to go through some up, ups and downs probably in this tournament with the competition they're going to have to play. But you've got to fight through that stuff. You know, you've got to find a way to, to maybe pull off an upset Wednesday night against a Collinsville team that's very athletic. Uh, so I, I, think he, I think what he's, Coach Hawkins is happy about is the effort, the effort yes. and that they didn't give up. And they actually had a chance to take the lead late in the game. But there were a lot of mistakes and, and just like penalties in football, it's not necessarily the number of penalties you have. It's when they occur. And tonight, turnovers for Cardville. When they occurred in the game, they were deadly. 49-43, that is the final. Carter, uh, Carterville will play Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. As you heard Coach say, they're going to take on the uh, Collinsville Cahawks. That game will be right here on News Radio WJPF. I'm heading off for Thanksgiving break. Have a safe trip. Enjoy yourself. Don't eat too much turkey. And if you've got any left over, bring, bring me some. I, I can almost promise a safe trip. I can't promise anything <laughs> after that. Uh, Scott has got to have you covered on Wednesday night. And uh, then on Friday night, Carterville will play, and they'll play two on Saturday. I'll be listening and uh, yelling and screaming at the radio. Just like a regular fan does. So. And you can text me and scream at me that way if you want. 49-43, <laughs> Heron over the Carterville Lions this evening. For Scott, for our producer engineer back at the station, Mr. Robert Teese, we appreciate you tuning in as it was the Heron Tigers. 49-43, game one of the Pyramid Plus Tournament. Uh, for, I'm Dave McKenzie. God bless. We'll talk to you Wednesday night. News Radio, WJPF. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it.